right everybody it's the underside of the e46 and what i'm doing now is i get the a burnt up clutch so um noticed that the clutch lately has been slipping uh the revs aren't uh matching what the engine should be outputting and um uh, everyone who's ridden, driven a a manual car kind of knows what a slipping clutch feels like so um, it's doing it more and more and the car has 885,000 miles on it so I'm assuming um, I couldn't find anything in the records that indicated that the clutch has been changed so uh, it's a long time for the clutch to go and I'm gonna change it out so I got a couple other problems that I probably will address when I do this the rear main seal I can tell under here that there's some uh, oil leaking probably from the rear main seal so since I'm gonna have the transmission out I'll do that job as well um, also I have some leaking up here from the rear of the transmission itself I think it might be coming from the rear seal that goes to the uh, drive shaft right up here and so I'll check that out when I have the transmission out and see if I can figure out where that's coming from and replace that seal if possible um, and I'll show you how to do all of it. First thing I'm going to start with is this plate back here underneath the exhaust, the, the mid pipe of the exhaust. Uh, it's a bunch of 13 millimeter bolts and a, an impact is going to make this job go a lot smoother. So if you don't have one, I recommend highly purchasing one. All right, so this plate has four uh, 13 millimeter bolts and two 13 millimeter nuts. You might have to tap on the two uh, nuts or the bolts that come through that are on these rubber grommets or bushings uh, to get it to pop out. Okay, this job's gonna have a lot of nuts and bolts, so wherever I can, I'm gonna just thread in the uh, nuts and bolts back into their original locations so that I can keep track of everything and make sure I know where they go. Another thing to do early on in this process is to uh, make sure that you throw some penetrant oil on all of the bolts you think are going to be a problem. This front plate here underneath the engine has uh, 16 millimeter bolts and there's eight of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, eight. Make sure you be careful when you take out the last one because this is a heavy piece. As I expected, only one of the five nuts for the exhaust came off without breaking the bolt off, or the stud. So the studs are kind of stuck in here and the the threads, the end of the threads have been ripped off, which I kind of thought would happen because, again, it's got 185,000 miles on it, and uh, it's all rusted out. So what I'll do is I, I took them all off, um, and the exhaust will now come off after I get some of the other hangers off, um, like back here. Um, but I'll show you how to fix that without having to replace your manifolds oh and these exhaust nuts are 15 millimeter and there's five of them uh, one three of them have this plate on there that'll come off when you take them off okay taking off the exhaust so at the rear of the exhaust is two rubber hangers um, right up here so you just reach up there with a pry tool and you can pry the hanger off of the metal pin. One here and one here on the inboard side. And then at the back, the hang, the exhaust will be resting on this cross brace here. So just uh, leave that intact for now and we'll go up and deal with the front. At the front, you have this cross brace right here. Um, it's held on with two rubber bushings through these two holes which are held in with 13 millimeter nuts and bolts. Um, and this, at the end of this, that's a 13 millimeter bolt that goes all the way through to the top. Uh, be careful, that one might be rusted out like mine is, but luckily it came out without breaking. 
Um, I might try to find a new bolt to fit that though because this one is really corroded. Here's the nut and bolt combo with the uh, rubber washers in between. It's like a gasket type situation or isolator that fits between there and that goes right up through here. Next, uh, this cross brace is held on with two 16 millimeter bolts, one at the front and one at the rear. And one more, about halfway down the cross brace, there's this uh, relief right here. And up in there, that's a 13 millimeter bolt. As I was saying before, three out of the four studs broke off on my exhaust here. This is the downpipe that comes uh, off the um, engine. And so what I did was I cut them off using my angle grinder here from DeWalt with a metal bit or metal blade on it. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to drill out through each of the studs to get them out. So in order to not have it slide, I'll use a center punch here and I'll make sure I get close to the center and then I'll drill right through it to get it to uh, be able to knock this out of its place. And then I'll put some bolts through here to hold it together when I'm putting it all back together. Okay, you may need to uh, use a couple different size drill bits. Um, and as you can see, I wasn't completely centered. Uh, but once you get enough of it uh, drilled out, um, you can use a mallet or something to uh, hammer out the rest of it. And I don't know if it'll come up, if it's light enough back here, but uh, you can see that the the stud is starting to push out through the back. Um, so it just, it takes some time and uh, some muscle, but uh, eventually you'll get it to pop out. Also got to remove the heat shield uh, next. It's held on with uh, two 10 millimeter bolts at the front and there and there um, it, I've already removed mine so that's why I can see the drive shaft here um, but it's held on like I said with those two 10 millimeters at the front and then back here in front of the drive shaft is also two 10 millimeters up um, above the drive shaft or not above it but I'm right in front of it um, also there's these 14 I believe millimeter uh, that you should have already removed that uh, hold on that uh, tray or that pan when you're taking out the drive shaft the uh, front is held in with 18 millimeter bolts and nuts there's two 13 millimeter nuts in the center section leave those for last and at the back uh, u-joint there are four of these e14 bolts okay now at the back end of the uh, shifter linkage there's uh, I think two clips actually holding this uh, linkage together so first is the outer one here you just kind of press uh, that off and then there is a uh, mine's yellow I'm not sure if they're all like that but uh, it's a plastic washer that goes on the inside Dick something flat in here and pry out this other side this back, back bushing is held in with a couple of uh, pins that go through the sides um, you can kind of walk it out of its position you can see there it's almost nearly all the way out there the clutch slave cylinder is held in with two 13 millimeter bolts, uh, one on the bottom and up top the one I'm loosening right now.
Okay, once you get both of those nuts off, you can take the uh, slave cylinder out of the transmission bell housing and then uh, set it aside. It can let it hang. It's not that heavy. Or you can tie it up with a zip tie or um, a bungee cord. Next is an electrical connection right up there. Um, here's what the end looks like. You got to press in to release the wire um, clips on the side and then pull out. Um, it might be easier to stick a uh, flathead in here and just take this wire off and then you can pull it out easily. There's also a clip, retaining clip right up here that is holding it to the transmission. You just have to uh, undo that with a flathead. The transmission brace is held on with uh, four 13 millimeter bolts. Uh, once you pull those out, the transmission will drop a little bit. Um, see how there's a gap here now. And that actually will facilitate the angle, will facilitate you getting to all the E uh, bolts up uh, around the bell housing. The cross piece is mounted to the transmission with these uh, rubber uh, bushings and they're held in place with uh, 13 millimeter nuts or bolts from the bottom, nuts on top. Okay, now we need to get to all of the different bolts that are holding the transmission uh, belt housing to the engine. And this, so this three 10 millimeters, uh, they are here, I've already taken it out. Here, I've already taken it out. And up here, I've already taken that one out too. So those ones are pretty easy. And then there's two uh, 12 millimeter uh, E12 that are attached to the starter motor. And those are, I don't know if you can even see them, Okay, right there, that's a 14. So that's one of the ones actually holding the uh, bell housing to the engine. Right up here, uh, can I get it? Right up above that, if you follow the bell housing around, you can kind of just make it out. Uh, there we go. You can kind of get a picture of them up there. Those are the two E14s at the top. The left one that you see in the frame right now, you need to um, feel for. The right one, you can actually see. Um, if you look up, if you come back under the transmission and kind of look up at this angle. And then the last E14 is right down here. And so those are the ones you need to take off. Now to do that, the two top ones, you need a really long extension. I don't have a really long extension, so I've stuck together three different extensions to make one. But if you have a three foot extension, um, then that's the best thing to use. Um, and they take some muscle, so um, just, uh, I use this a big three foot breaker bar on a couple of them. One last bolt on the bell housing you don't want to forget about is this uh, 10 millimeter. Um, it's just a uh, normal socket, 10 millimeter, that goes from the front right behind the exhaust here to the back. On the bell housing size of the uh, transmission, uh, what you can do is take off the old parts. So. Uh, next piece is the pivot arm here, and it's it's free on the right side here. On the left, it's held in by this uh, wire retaining clip. Um, and so you just kind of pry that off. And pry that off here. It separates in two pieces. There. And so that will come out when you pry these two pieces apart is a little opening that it creates. And then you put the pivot arm in 
and it should slide underneath this clip here but on top of the pivot ball on one side um, this is the same either way so I don't think you can mess it up uh, left or right um, the other side will go of course on the slave cylinder actuation and then you put the throw out bearing or release bearing if you want to call it slide that in here and I put some grease behind here where the um, slave cylinder actuation will um, come in contact and then there's some grease by behind here where the uh, pivot ball is and then I put a little grease um, just where the the release bearing contacts the pivot arm here when removing the pressure plate from the flywheel there are six of these six millimeter bolts and now the flywheel has eight 19 millimeter bolts now even though this Dumas flywheel has 185,000 miles on it I am going to retain it and put it back in the car um, I don't think it's that bad you can uh, test it for how much movement it has um, in a rotational movement and also to see if, if it has any play when you pull up and down on it. Mine has zero play up and down and it has about one tooth width. If you look at this, um, the plate, the the plate that actually has uh, meets the friction material as it moves when you move it side to side, it moves about one tooth and then it engages the springs. And so I've never seen even a brand new dual mass flywheel that didn't have some amount of play. But if it had any more than about one or two teeth worth of play um, before it engaged the springs, then I, I would replace it. But this one is, uh, it, it feels fine to me. I would, uh, also make sure that once you engage the springs that when you press it move it any further that it the springs will bounce back and if i if i hold this ring down at the bottom and i push it further to engage the springs then it'll it'll bounce back i don't know if that'll see you can see that on the camera but it does bounce back once you take out the play and rotate it anymore it'll bounce it'll bounce back because of the springs in there so this dual mass flywheel is fine um, I did just lightly uh, sand the surface just to get off the hot spots um, from the old friction material but other than that I'm just gonna reinstall this on the block here I put back in the spacer um, there's some pins that it'll fit around on both sides so it'll fit in place there the starter will be a little loose here um, you just got to leave it that way until you start putting the bolts in um, i'm going to chase out these threads here for the flywheel um, just to make sure i clean out all the remaining uh, thread locker that might be in there Okay, when you're mounting the flywheel, you have this uh, pin that sticks out here on one of the flywheel bolts. Um, so you have to line that up with the appropriate hole in the actual dual mass flywheel, which I'll show you right here. If you look at, uh, which one is it right here? This hole right here, you can see that it's got a step inside of it. It steps down. The rest of them don't do that. So that's the hole that goes over that spot and the other ones won't fit so you'll notice that it it doesn't fit if you try to mount it the wrong way okay so i've got all the flywheel bolts started um, these are brand new flywheel bolts that i purchased online i'll, I'll leave the link in the description um, if you care there's the part number tighten these down in a crisscross pattern um, and then torque them down to uh, 100 newton meters or 74 foot pounds is the spec that I found. 
to hold the flywheel in place if you don't have the special tool that will grip onto the uh, splines here. You can just use a piece of wood up against uh, one of the pins on the flywheel and um, hold it so you can torque it down. The flywheel bolts are 19 millimeter. Next, preparing for the mounting of the, the uh, friction disc. Uh, make sure you clean off the face of the flywheel. Um, once you go to mount the pressure plate, they'll use these uh, there's three pins. There's one there, there's one up there, and there's one right here to mount. Um, there's three corresponding holes in the pressure plate. You're supposed to clock it to um, get it to the right um, balance, uh, but since I'm reusing the flywheel, I'm going to forego that step. Uh, the new flywheel should come with a balance mark on it. Um, but I'm going to figure that that's overkill and not needed. So I'll just uh, mount, mount it on the pins. So you insert the mounting tool through the friction disc. The friction disc has a mark on it that says Getreib Sight. And that means uh, transmission side. Uh, so put that towards the transmission and then you uh, basically sandwich this friction material in between the pressure plate and the flywheel. Because there's this retaining plate here on this luck clutch, um, the pressure or the uh, springs will be um, held back from contacting the pressure plate. So once the uh, you should be able to move around. It shouldn't be, the pressure plate should be loose in there. You can see I can, I can move it around a little bit. Um, so now you just start putting the bolts in and I got new bolts. Part number will be in the description below. They're M6 and they go all the way around the outside of this pressure plate. I got all the pressure plate bolts in these six millimeter Allen and um, I just hand tightened them for now all the way around and then I'll do them a crisscross pattern to 25 foot bounds. Okay now this uh, tool here is compressing the springs so in order to get that out I'm just going to use a flat head with a hammer and just um, all around just kind of back it out making sure that I can still I can still spin the clutch alignment tool here uh, the disc alignment tool and so I'll just make sure that that stays centered in there as I back this out slowly. So with the flathead screwdriver I was able to back this out uh, slowly around. Make sure that it doesn't uh, go off center and you're just uh, backing it out all the way around evenly. Now you can pull the alignment tool out. If you're working solo you can get the transmission up into place. Um, so I have a uh, jack here pushing up on the front of the engine to tilt it backwards and I have a jack in the back that I've got the transmission on. I had to slide the transmission under the car first and then put it on the jack just by tilting, um, tilting the transmission backwards, sliding the jack underneath the front of it and then um, putting it onto the plate of the jack and then kind of centering it uh, just by muscling it into place. Okay, after a lot of wrestling and uh, maneuvering with the jack, um, I was able to get it up into place. And um, I started with this uh, 14 uh, inverse Torx here and the one like 180 out right here. Those two I kind of set in the transmission and then as I pushed it into place and got closer I was able to start threading those two bolts and use those two bolts to kind of bring the transmission into the um, engine. And so as you're doing that though make sure the splines are, are matching up inside of the bell housing um, so that you're not uh, tightening it in the wrong position um, but eventually it should go in you will have to uh, tilt the front 
of the bell housing up a little bit to match the angle of the engine that you tilted um, and also because of the transmission tunnel you will interfere on the bell housing until you get it um, past some of this tighter portion up here um, then you can kind of you tilt it up and then you can flatten it out once once it's past some of those uh, tight areas Okay, again, you're going to need a bunch of extensions and uh, possibly a wobble socket. Um, if you have the engine tilted back, you can reach the bolts on the top um, with a three foot extension and a wobble. And you're just going to have to feel for them, really. If you reach up your hand um, on the left side of the transmission, you can get your hand up there and kind of feel. Uh, and put the uh, bolts into place with your fingers. Uh, tighten the E14s, four of them. I think that's uh, 66 foot-pounds. Um, and then the two E12s that are on the starter motor. And then the uh, three E10s. And I'll put the torque specs for all those on the uh, screen. Then you reattach the slave cylinder here with two 13 millimeter bolts. And remember to plug in the reverse switch up here, right above the slave cylinder. There's a clip that holds the wire to the uh, transmission housing. And then here's that um, electrical connection right here. Just press in on the, the wire part and then you push it in all the way until it sticks into place. Okay, next we'll grab our uh, shift linkage here. Um, you got to take this pin out, um, and I've greased up the pin and the uh, bushing, and then it will attach up here through that hole right there. So you have to take the pin out, put the uh, arm in place, and then put the pin through. Okay, when you get the front of the linkage in place, I mean, it'll kind of look like this. You got this lever right here, which was sticking up. You just got to press that down and engage it onto the transmission housing to lock it into place. And it, there we go. It'll snap into place. Okay, so I put this bar in uh, before putting the shift linkage. You can do it either way. It might be easier to put the, the shifter inside of the bar or this uh, plastic cup in here first um, but you can do it what I did was um, I mounted or placed the the shifter up through the tunnel I connected this rubber seal all the way around here you can bend it back and make sure that um, the seal engages all the way around and then I placed uh, this plastic cup into the bar here and I twisted it 90 degrees and then pulled it through tight so that it was bottomed out. And then I used a flathead screwdriver to, to uh, turn it 90 degrees back so that the two tabs, I can feel them with my finger up at the top. The two little pins that I mentioned when I was taking it out um, are pointed towards the front and the back. And that locks it into place and now I, I can't push it back out so it's, it's in there. Now once that's there, oh and another thing is the bend on the shift lever goes towards the front of the car. So the elbow or the bend uh, goes towards the front. And now we just put this up into place here and get one side in to the grooves on the side. There's a, there's a slot here on the side and, and you can put that in and then you walk the other side in while you have to use both hands with the flathead to get that up into place. Uh, next we'll put this bottom shift linkage in place. I've already pre-assembled this front part and it just slides in there. Remember there's a pin that goes down through the middle um, and I've, I've moved this, this um, wire out of the way and so I'll just slide that back over into that groove when, once I get the pin in. 
So I've got some uh, lithium grease up here and I also put some inside the cup here. Okay, so I've uh, slid the pin in um, and it will engage with that rod. And now I just um, slide that retaining ring back into place. Okay, now with the washer already on one side of this, uh, the back, I'll move that up into place and slide it into the shift lever. I'll put the other yellow washer on the back side. Like that. And slide on the retaining clip. Like that. It should be snug. Shouldn't be a lot of play in it. Um, with the shift link installed, you no longer need the engine tilted back so you can remove your um, jack from the front. And now I'll just go up um, and I will uh, use the clutch inside the car and shift through the gears to make sure it goes um, into all, the, all five gears and reverse make sure it engages so I, I currently have it in reverse right now um, make sure that the transmission engages and uh, everything before you start buttoning things back up next we'll use the 18 millimeter nuts and bolts uh, to attach the uh, guibo to the output flange of the transmission that's uh, 47 foot-pounds when you're installing the new Guibo, just make sure that um, you look around the edge. It will have uh, these arrows and you gotta install it per the directions here. So the arrows go uh, point towards the transmission and a point towards the flange. Either the uh, transmission flange or the drive shaft flange. Next, uh, lift the drive shaft up into place and attach the 18 millimeter bolts and nuts at the front, uh, 47 foot pounds. Um, the two center nuts here, uh, I can't remember the torque spec, I'll try to put it on the screen for you. And then the back two are 63 foot pounds, or back four, and these are E12s. And if you uh, engage the uh, parking brake, you can hold the drive shaft to be able to uh, torque those down. Okay, to finish it up, uh, you gotta put the uh, heat shield back on, and that's uh, four 10 millimeter bolts. That's uh, two at the front and two at the back. Uh, then you mount the exhaust. Uh, with the four bolts or four nuts at the front and then mounted in the hangers at the back um, It's easier if you uh, take the hangers out of the car and use the uh, Alignment bolts that are um, in the car to uh, push it up into place And then the nuts you can use to uh, hold it up as you're uh, Kind of have to push it up and hold it there and then um, thread the nuts on at the same time so it's a pain in the butt and it helps to if you have two people but you can do it alone um, I'd uh, do the back first um, and then once that's hanging on the hangers in the back then do the uh, front and then you can mount uh, that brace that goes across here to the back uh, that's got some uh, 15 millimeter bolts, I believe. Uh, three 15 millimeter and then one 13 millimeter that's up top. It's uh, kind of recessed up in there. And then this plate right here, mount that. 
It's got four 13 millimeter bolts around the sides and then two 13 millimeter that uh, go to the exhaust brackets hangers that are uh, up above. Then at the front, at the front you have uh, this hanger right here. It's got two 13 millimeter bolts and nuts that go through some uh, rubber grommets. And then over here, I had to replace this bolt. Um, so yours, where's my camera? Uh, right here, I did. I had to replace this bolt that goes up through uh, the exhaust hanger here. And so um, I'm not sure what the original size is on that. And that, uh, there's a plate the under tray that goes on the front and you gotta mount that as well. So I buttoned everything back up and took it out for a test drive and the car's working great. Uh, shifts great, uh, no problems with uh, the shift, uh, the clutch feel, engagement, any of that. Um, this is the old disc just in case you're wondering what a clutch disc with 185,000 miles on it looks like and it hadn't even gotten down to the rivets yet it was close it was right there ready to uh start uh, catching those rivets if that would have happened then i would have ruined my flywheel but uh it didn't i can't believe this clutch lasted 185,000 miles the previous owner was an older lady um and she obviously babied it so that's good for me. So uh, I also looked around the garage to make sure that I wasn't missing any parts and lo and behold that stupid 10 millimeter bolt that attaches the O2 sensor wires to the back of the uh, or the front of the bell housing on the uh, passenger side of about midway I did forget that so I'm gonna have to lift the car back up and put this stupid bolt in place.